and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Natasha Kirchuk here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Israel's Channel 10 News is reporting that U.S. President Donald Trump's administration is pushing Israel to transfer parts of the West Bank to Palestinian jurisdiction. According to the report, the U.S. sees the economic incentives that the Israeli Security Cabinet approved on Sunday as insufficient. They want areas in the northern West Bank or Shamlon region to be transferred from Area C to Area B. Area C under the Oslo Accords is under full Israeli control and has an Israeli population of around 400,000. It's the only part of the West Bank where Israelis can reside. Area B is under the administrative control of the PA with the IDF maintaining security responsibility. The Prime Minister's office is denying Channel 10's report, and in a separate report, Channel 10 says that Israel's National Security Council is thinking of transferring two Arab neighborhoods in Jerusalem that lie across the security barrier to a new local council. Under the plan, the neighborhoods would remain under Israeli control and receive their funding for municipal services directly from the state and not the city. The Islamist terrorist group Hamas, which has ruled the Gaza Strip since 2007, is set to execute three people today. The three men were sentenced to die on Sunday, having been accused of causing the death of a senior Hamas leader and collaborating with Israel. Mazen Fakawa, a Hamas terror leader who orchestrated a 2002 suicide bombing that killed nine, had been released from prison in 2011 as part of the Gilad Shalit deal. On March 24th, he was shot in the garage of his Gaza home. Hamas claims that Israel arranged the hit, but Amnesty International is requesting that the Hamas authorities immediately halt these executions and ensure that these men are given a fair retrial. Hamas has already executed three others who they claim shared responsibility for Fakawa's death, although the alleged collaborators had all been arrested prior to Fakawa's assassination. Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman is expressing serious concern about the $110 billion U.S.-Saudi arms deal that U.S. President Donald Trump recently finalized. Lieberman is saying that he's expressed his reservations to U.S. National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster. In an interview with Army Radio, the defense minister says that he's not at peace with any arms race and that the huge Saudi purchase doesn't add much peace of mind. The Saudi deal is apparently the single biggest arms deal in American history. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu is claiming that the U.S. will ensure Israel's qualitative advantage, citing an additional $75 million that the U.S. is providing in aid to Israel's missile defense program. Saudi Arabia and Israel share a common enemy in Iran, and although relations between the two countries seem to be warming, an arms race would spell problems for Israel. A federal appeals court has rejected the appeal of former Israeli spy Jonathan Pollard to lift some of his restrictive parole conditions. The second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals issued the judgment yesterday, just a week after Pollard's lawyer made the case that the terms violate his religious freedoms. Part of his parole terms require him to wear a GPS monitoring device at all times, forcing the Orthodox Jew to violate Shabbat by using electricity. And his lawyer argues that the restrictive computer monitoring he must submit to prevents companies from hiring him. Nevertheless, the court has rejected easing his parole conditions, arguing that he continues to pose a threat to United States intelligence. Pollard served around 30 years in federal prison after pleading guilty to charges of conspiracy to commit espionage. He had been selling classified information to Israel. Israeli President Ruven Rivlin is calling on the country to take immediate steps in improving the quality of life of the Arab population of Jerusalem. At a Jerusalem Day ceremony commemorating the 50th anniversary of the city's reunification, Rivlin said we cannot sing songs of praise for a united Jerusalem while the area where 40% of its residents live is the poorest urban area in Israel. The president is calling for a Marshall Plan to keep Jerusalem united, and while he praised Jerusalem Affairs Minister Ze'ev Elkin's efforts to develop the eastern part of the city, it doesn't go far enough for him. He is calling it unacceptable that the capital of Israel has become one of the lowest socioeconomic areas, and as a member of a family which has resided in Jerusalem since the beginning of the 19th century, Rivlin has special ties to the city. That's all for now. I'm Natasha Kirchuk, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.